Thursday, six week after Pentecost, morning meditation, July 8th, 2021. Meditations are taken from Meditations and Readings for Every Day of the Year by St. Alphonsus de Liguori, Bishop and Doctor of the Church, First Choices Teacher in Moral Theology, Act of Faith in the Presence of God, Nomen de Patri Fili, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Most holy, adorable, and undivided Trinity, one God and three persons, I believe that thou art here present. I adore thee with the deepest humility, and render to thee with my whole heart the homage which is due to thy sovereign majesty. Grant me the grace to pray as I ought. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. O blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and my mother, I ask for the grace to continue to pray. St. Alphonsus de Liguori, pray for us. Christian soul, reflect on these every day of your life. There is one God to glorify, one eternity to prepare for, saints and angels to call upon, one life to use well, one body to mortify, one death to suffer, one hell to avoid, one judgment to confront, one Jesus to imitate, one soul to save, neighbors to edify, one world to be detached from, sins to expiate for, passions to subject to our will, virtues to acquire, one heaven to win. Act of humility, litany of humility. O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being culminated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged, deliver me Jesus from the fear of being suspected deliver me Jesus that others may be loved more than I Jesus grant me the grace to desire it that others may be esteemed more than I Jesus grant me the grace to desire it that in the opinion of the world others may increase and I may decrease Jesus grant me the grace to desire it that others may be chosen and I set aside Jesus grant me the grace to desire it that others may be praised, and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may become holier than I, provided that I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we ask for your guidance in this our morning meditation through the intercession of thy blessed Mother Mary, ever virgin. Ave Maria, gratia plena Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, and benedictus fructus ventris tui Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mata Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc in hora mortis nostre. Amen. In honor of Saint Joseph, our guardian angel, and all the saints, we pray Gloria Patria Filio, et Spiritus Sancto, sicut erat in principio, nunc et semper, in secula seculorum. Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful and enkindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and it shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O oh God, amen. Sorry, I got distracted there. Thursday, six week at the Pentecost morning meditation. <clears throat> Abuse of divine mercy. God has pity on those who fear him, but not on sinners who despise him. To offend God because he shows us mercy is to provoke him in the highest degree to chastise us. God has pity on those who fear him, but not on sinners who despise him. To offend God because he shows us mercy is to provoke him in the highest degree to chastise us. Again, to offer an insult to God because God is a forgiving God is to deride him. Quote, but God is not mocked. Galatians 6, verse 7. The devil will say to you, But who knows, even with this other sin, it may be that you shall yet be saved. But meanwhile, if you sin, you yourself may condemn your soul to hell. Who knows? 
It may be that as of yet you shall be saved, but it may also happen and more easily happen that you may be lost. And is the affair of eternal salvation to be risked on a who knows? If in the meantime death should come upon you, if God should abandon you, that other sin, after that other sin, what would then become of you? No, my God, I will never more offend thee. How many are now suffering in hell for fewer sins than mine? I will no longer be devoted to self, but will be thine and entirely thine. To thee I consecrate my whole liberty and my will. Quote, I am thine, do thou save me. Psalm 118, verse 94. Save me from hell, but first save me from sin. I love thee, my Jesus. I will never more forsake thee. The fathers of the church say that God has determined the number of sins he will forgive each one. Hence, as we know not this number, we have to fear lest with every one more additional sin God should abandon us. This dreadful thought, who knows whether God will any more pardon me, ought to be a great restraint upon us and keep us from again offending God with this fear. We should be secure. He who has been more favored by God with lights and graces ought to be more afraid of being abandoned by him. The angelic doctor says that the grievousness of sin increases in proportion to the ingratitude with which sin is committed. Woe then to the Christian who, after having been enriched with the graces of God, offends him mortally. My Jesus, what thou hast shown me numberless mercies, I have repaid them by multiplied offenses. Thou hast bestowed favors upon me, and I in return have despised thee. But now I love thee with my whole heart, and I desire to make amends by my love for all the offenses I've committed against thee. Oh, do thou enlighten and strengthen me. Sister Mary Strozzi says that, quote, Sin in the religious person strikes heaven with horror and obliges God to turn away from that soul. He who has not a great dread of mortal sin is not far from falling into it. Hence, it is necessary to fly from dangerous occasions as much as possible. It is necessary also to fly from all deliberate venial sins. Father Alvarez used to say, little, quote, little voluntary faults do not kill the soul, but they so weaken it that when there comes a grievous temptation, it will not have strength to resist and will fall, unquote. St. Teresa has written, quote, from willful sin, however small it may be, may God deliver us, unquote. Because as the saint says, a deliberate venial sin does more harm than all the devils in hell. No, my Jesus, no, I will no more offend thee, neither in great things nor in small. Thou hast done too much to oblige me to love thee. I desire rather to die than to give thee the least offense. Thou dost not deserve insult, but... Rather, all my love, and I desire to love thee with all my strength. Give me thy assistance. Spiritual reading, prayer, its necessity. Four, on invoking the saints and on praying to the souls in purgatory and helping them by our prayers. Since it is certain, even of faith, that by our suffrages and chiefly by our prayers, as particularly recommended and practiced by the church, we can relieve those holy souls. Quote, I do not know how to excuse that man from sin who neglects to give them some assistance, at least by his prayers. If a sense of duty will not persuade us to succor them, let us think of the pleasure it will give Jesus Christ to see us endeavoring to deliver his beloved spouses from prison, in order that he may have them with him in paradise. Let us think of the store of merit which we can lay up by practicing this great act of charity. Let us think, too, that those souls are not ungrateful, and will never forget the great benefit we do them in relieving them of their pains and obtaining for them, by our prayers, anticipation of their entrance into glory, so that when they are there, 
They will never neglect to pray for us. And if God promises mercy to him who practices mercy towards his neighbor, quote, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy, Matthew 5, 7. He may reasonably expect to be saved, who remembers to assist those souls so afflicted and yet so dear to God. Jonathan, after having saved the Hebrews from ruin by a victory over the enemies, was condemned to death by his father, Saul, for having tasted some honey against his express commands. But the people came before the king and said, quote, Shall Jonathan then die, who hath wrought this great salvation in Israel? 1 Kings 14, 45. So may we expect that if any of us ever obtains by his prayers the liberation of a soul from purgatory, that soul will say to God, Lord, suffer not him who has delivered me from my torments to be lost. And if Saul spared Jonathan's life at the request of his people, God will not refuse the salvation of a Christian to the prayers of a soul which he, which is his own spouse. Moreover, St. Augustine says that God will cause those who in this life have succored those holy souls when they come to purgatory themselves to be most succored by others. I may here observe that in practice, one of the best suffrages is to hear Mass for them and during the Holy Sacrifice to recommend them to God by the infinite merits of Jesus Christ. The following form may be used. Quote, Eternal Father, I offer thee this sacrifice of the body and blood of Jesus Christ with all the pains which he suffered in life and death. And by the merits of his passion, I recommend to thee the souls in purgatory, especially that of etc., etc. And it is a very charitable act to recommend at the same time the souls of all those who are in their agony. For whatever doubt there may be whether or not the souls in purgatory can pray for us, and therefore whether or not it is useful to recommend ourselves to their prayers, there can be no doubt whatever with regard to the saints. For it is certain that it is most useful to have recourse to the intercession of the saints canonized by the church who are already enjoying the vision of God. To suppose that the church can err in canonizing is a sin or is heresy, according to St. Bonaventure, Bellarmine, and others, or at least very near to heresy, according to Soros, Azorius, Goti, etc. Because the sovereign pontiff, according to St. Thomas, is guided by the infallible influence of the Holy Ghost in a special way when canonizing the saints. But to return to the question just proposed, quote, are we obliged to have recourse to the intercession of the saints? I have no wish to undertake to decide this question, but I cannot admit the exposition of the teaching of St. Thomas. In several places above quoted, and especially, quote, in the book of sentences, he expressly lays it down as certain that everyone is bound to pray because, as he asserts, in no other way can the graces necessary for salvation be obtained from God except by prayer. Quote, every man is bound to pray from the fact that he is bound to produce procure spiritual good for himself, which he can only be got from God. So it can only be obtained by asking it of God. Unquote. Then, in another place of the same book, he proposes the exact question, quote, whether we are bound to pray to the saints to intercede for us. Unquote. And he answers as follows. In order to catch his real meaning, we will quote the entire passage. Quote, According to Dionysius, the order which God has instituted for his creatures requires that things which are remote may be brought to God by beings of things which are nearer to him. Hence, as the saint in heaven, saints in heaven are nearest of all to him, The order of his law requires that we who remaining in the body are absent from the Lord shall be brought to him by means of the saints. And this is affected by the divine goodness pouring forth his gifts through them. And as the path of our return to God corresponds to the path of the good things which proceed from him to us, it follows that as the benefits of God come down to us by means of the suffrages of the saints, we ought to be brought to God by the same way, so that a second time we may receive his benefits by the mediation of the saints. Hence it is that we make them our intercessors with God, and as it were, our mediators, when we ask them to pray for us. Quote, note well the words, the order of God's law requires, unquote. Especially note the words, quote, as the benefits of God come down to us by the means of the suffrages of the saints, in the same way we must be brought back to God, so that a second time we may receive his benefits by the mediation of the saints, unquote. So that according to St. Thomas, the order of the divine law requires that we mortals should be saved by means of the saints, and that we receive by their intercession the help necessary for our salvation. He then puts the objection that it appears superfluous to have recourse to the saints, since God is infinitely more merciful than they, and more ready to hear us. This he answers by saying, quote, God has so ordered, not on account of any want of clemency in his part, but to keep the right order, which he has universally established, of working by means of second causes. 
It is not for want of mercy, but to preserve the aforesaid order in the creation. Unquote. In conformity with this doctrine of St. Thomas, the continuator of Torlini says with Silvius that although God is to be prayed uh, to as the author of grace, yet we are bound to have recourse also to the intercession of the saints, so as to observe the order which God has established with regard to our salvation, which is that the inferior should be saved by imploring the aid of the superior. Quote, by the law of nature we are bound to observe the order which God has appointed. But God has appointed that the inferior should obtain salvation by imploring the assistance of his superior. Concluding prayer, I give thee thanks, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, for the light which thou now bestowest upon me. I make a firm purpose of my will that I may in uniformity with your divine will of trying God keep my resolutions and keep them well. For the love of thee and thy mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that through her intercession I may receive by her loving hands the grace to be ever faithful to my resolutions, my state in life, and rule of life, now until the hour of my death. I give thee thanks, O God, for the patience with which thou hast hitherto borne with me. I see that although I forgot thee, thou didst not forget me. I am sorry, my sovereign good, for having turned my back upon thee, and am now resolved to give myself entirely to thee. And why should I delay, that thou mayest abandon me, and that death may find me as miserable and grateful as I have been, even until now? No, my God, I will no more offend thee, but will love thee. I love thee, O infinite goodness. Give me perseverance in thy holy love. I ask for nothing more. Mary, refuge of sinners, intercede for all the holy souls in purgatory, and for all poor sinners, particularly myself. In nomine Patria, Filii, Spiritus Sancti, men, have a blessed morning and day, O slaves of Mary.